All right, guys, welcome back to Norse Outdoors. Today, I'm going to be showing you guys how to make a quick, easy, and uh, cheap bait well uh, to keep your bait going on your fishing adventures. So with that being said, I just want to start this off with a little disclaimer. Um, since we are prioritizing it being cheap, um, we're going to not have all the features as all the nice bait wells that are on the market today. Uh, so this isn't going to be insulated. Um, so that kind of has its own uh, worries, problems. But with that being said, it's a great option because um, it is very cheap and can get you a bait well very quickly. Um, so since it's not insulated, make sure you're monitoring your bait just a little bit more. Make sure you're switching the water just a little bit more and keep you're keeping it at a good temperature. So um, from there, uh, how we how we use this type of bait? Well, um, we use it to either split up our bait. So we'll, in one we'll have you know our fat heads. And then in this one, maybe we'll have our suckers and shiners separated by size, or we'll have, you know, mix and bait in both, but one will be in our hub shack and the other will be out on the tip up line doing, um, resetting those. Just, uh, cause when we have four guys out there, we want to have uh, bait access, uh, kind of anywhere we go quick and easy, um, to make the time uh, worth it on the ice so that's kind of we use these another way we use these um so this is the 19 quart size uh so i actually made one out of the 53 quart size which is quite a bit bigger um and we use that on our week-long fishing trips to like lake of the woods or our summer fishing trips um on the boat to store all basically all the bait for that trip um, so we'll stop at a bait store on the way up. We'll just load it full of fathead suckers, shiners, everything you can think of. And uh, from there, we'll put it in either in our, keep it in our ice shack, which I'll show a clip right here of it being in use in our ice shack, or um, we'll keep it on our, or in our camper on our summer days. And uh, keep the bait alive that way. So it works really well on those long trips, store a bunch of bait, easy access, quick, and you don't even have to think about it. You can just think about fishing. So um, with that being said, let's uh, talk about the parts we're gonna get or use. I've talked about the box a little bit already, but um, the box is clear. That works really nice. Um, you can see in, lets a lot of light in, and you can see the bait that's in there uh, helps you pick out the right one that you want for a certain situation if you fish like that also you can just monitor them and see if they're you know still doing good or you gotta switch the water or stuff like that so clear is nice not necessary it can be any um, color you want then the most crucial aspect of it is having a nice gasket so this has a really nice gasket stops the water um, from coming out and over that lip so that is crucial the last thing that you really want to look for is you want to make sure you have latches on all four sides or um, and the bigger ones they'll have actually two latches on the long side so um, that which is even better so with that being uh, said because uh, we we made one with the with, with a different box it was older and um, it only had latches on the long side and we went up to lake of the woods had this in our ice shack uh drove up there six hours bumpy windy roads and water just kind of splashed all, all of these long sides i mean it was all over the floor it wasn't a good deal um so uh make sure you got latches on all four sides to seal it in um that 53 quart one that we took out actually to um devil lake, devil's lake north dakota didn't spill a drop of water, worked perfectly. So these are good um, boxes for your bait well. Um, so this is $10, so not doesn't break your bank. And then the 53 quart one was $17, so still really good price. Um, now talking about the hardware we're gonna need to mount uh, the bubbler, uh, we're gonna need 1032 by half inch machine screws. Uh, we're gonna need number 10 
flat washers to go along with those. And then 1032 eight corner cap nuts to give a nice clean finish to the screws on the inside. We're gonna need to seal up around those bolt holes, um, 3 16 rubber flat washers. You can do silicone or any type of sealant like that, that works too. Um, and then we're gonna need a quarter by 3 8 uh, rubber garment um, that just kind of seals up and makes the hole for your uh, air hole or your air tube uh, really nice. And then we're going to take this half inch uh, conduit strap for electrical conduit. And we're going to modify it and we're going to turn it into something that looks like this. Um, so your bubbler can just slide right on there. Um, it works really great. Um, and I will have the clip of me modifying this and turning it into this at the end of the video. Um, so skip to the end if you're following along and you want to build it while you're watching or just keep watching through and wait till the end to see how I modify this and turn it into this. It's pretty simple. Um, all you need is kind of a hammer and a, a pair of pliers um, and you're good to go. So from there, um, those are all the parts. Those are the parts will cost seven bucks. Um, so, and that's for stainless steel. If you go with zinc, it will be cheaper. So in total, we got $17 here. If you go bigger, you know, um, you're looking at that, uh, $24 mark, but, uh, for 20 bucks right here, it's a steal of a deal for how nice this, uh, bait well is. Now that's assuming that you already have your, uh, a bubbler. Um, if you don't have a bubbler, really recommend this Ingel uh, bubbler. It is rechargeable and it's just super quiet. I mean, you hear that, then you hear this guy. I mean, complete difference. Save your time, save your money. Just buy one of these. Don't have to deal with batteries. Great run time on the Ingel. Can't recommend this uh, anymore. Um, so if you are in a market place for a bubbler, um, there's a link below um, and there will be a link for all these parts um, to Amazon so you can just get everything shipped to your house or you can you know make a list and uh, go get them yourself but really nice bubbler um, to go along with that you might need some uh, air hose um, if you don't already have some that came with your bubbler so this is just quarter inch vinyl tubing um, from your local hardware store you got your aerator block and a weight to keep that down. So um, in terms of that, uh, that's your bubbler side. Then you're going to need a drill um, to drill some holes. Uh, with that drill, you need a 3 8 drill bit uh, for the rubber garment. You're going to need a 3 16 drill bit for your bolts. Uh, you're going to need a screwdriver and a wrench to tighten up your machine screws. You're going to need some markers, tape, and some either tape measure or ruler to actually get uh, to place your marks. So that being said, uh, let's get into building. I know I've just talked a lot, but let's get into actually building uh, the bait well. So the first thing that you want to consider is where you want um, your bubblers to go. We stay off the lid because we like to stack stuff, but no issues with going on the lid if that works best for you in your scenario so um with the lid out uh you can go on the short side here you know stuff like that uh you can go on the long side here you know kind of got a lot of options um so consider how you're going to use it uh in your cases so think about how you're going to store it in your truck or transport in your truck or car you know, how is it going to sit on the boat? How is it going to sit in my live uh, or in your ice shack? Or how am I going to use it? How am I going to transport it on the ice or anything like that? Just kind of think through it um, and then just kind of know what sides to stay off. So how we're probably going to use this is we're probably going to have a either the wall of the boat here or the wall of the ice shack there. And we're going to push it up against it. And these three sides are going to be clear. So with that being said, um, I'm going to put that... I'm going to put the bubbler on this long front side here. Um, so 
once we have kind of the spot picked out, we're going to have to figure out kind of more specifically where we want it. So the few things, the two things to consider there is uh, your hose routing. So I've always imagined putting that rubber garment up here for the hose to go through. So um, I'm just going to kind of test mock it up, put the air hose on. And you can see how that's sticking down right now. So I want to make sure that I keep this bubbler as high as I can and then route that nicely up to that corner. So that will work really nice, really great. Um, if you got this style where it comes out the top, I uh, don't really have to worry about, you know, putting it too low. Um, and if you kind of shove it way up high, it still works, still clears. Um, so kind of play where you want with the style bubblers. Um, so then once we consider the hose routing, um, which the second one you want to consider is kind of sneaky, kind of, you can kind of get, forget about it, even though it's pretty simple. Um, like, let's say like you measure it all out. You're like, this works great. My hose has plenty of room to route out, route up to there. You know, this latch opens and clears perfectly. I really enjoyed that. Okay, I took my measurements. I'm going to put my bracket right there. And that's perfect to me. Well, if you do that, um, you're not going to be able to get your bubbler on. Uh, it's going to hit the top of the latch. And, you know, you're kind of out of luck. So, um, to save on that, make sure that you can you place it low enough so that you can slip your bubbler on yet for in this case high enough to route that hose up um in this case uh you know you got a little bit more freedom because you can keep it lower and uh still route it up so uh we're actually gonna mark our uh holes now i'm gonna take a piece of tape and i'm gonna stick it on here um I'm just kind of loose for right now so See, I want to keep it as high as possible. I'm going to try to keep it as close to the bottom as that latch. So I'm going to measure down. And I got inch and five eighths there. Um, since it flares out and kind of flexes a little bit, I'm going to cheat it up a little bit more to an inch and a half. So I'm going to go inch and a half down from there to the top of my bracket. Then I'm going to take my bracket and I'm going to measure the center hole. So these are half inch brackets, center hole quarter inch so I'm going to come down from the bottom of the latch inch and a half and uh, plus that quarter so I'm going to use this expo marker so you guys can actually see it on camera but so inch and a half plus a quarter inch and three quarter mark that mark that and then what I'm going to do um, for you guys, I recommend using a pencil or a fine tip Sharpie or anything that gives us, you know, finer line. But, um, in my case, I'm just going to use this expo marker. I'm going to take this ruler and just mark a nice line, uh, for that. So now I know my holes have to be somewhere on that line, kind of wherever I'm feeling it. Um, so... Uh, we're going to now measure. So There's kind of two ways to do this step, kind of putting it on, getting it centered, if you want it centered. Um, first is you can measure the overall length of your bracket. Um, mine comes, comes out to two and seven eighths, three inches right in there. Um, so you can take your uh, tape measure, measure across on your line. You know, subtract the three inches, six and a half, you know, six and a half divided by two, three and a quarter. You can mark three and a quarter, three and a quarter, and, and center in between those two lines. Or um, these actually have a mark right on, right in center here. Uh, you can see there's a S right there. So what I'm just going to do is I'm going to take my marker and I'm going to mark just the center of the box. So I'm gonna measure between these two kind of slants as a reference, four and a half plus 
the uh, half inch on the end, so four and three quarter. Boom, there's my center mark. And then what I'm gonna do is take my bracket back up, line it up there so that it's right in center. And then I'm just gonna mark this hole. And for reference, I'm gonna mark this hole. So I got a hole here and a hole here. So um, with that being said, we are going to drill the hole now. So you're gonna grab your drill, grab your 316 drill bit. And we're gonna punch the hole. All right, now since we got the one hole punched, um, we are going to, we're not gonna go straight away and drill on the other mark, what we're actually gonna do is we're gonna take one of your 10 30 second uh, screws, put it through your uh, bracket. We're actually gonna just kinda mount it in there, uh, how it kinda would be. And we're gonna do this kinda for two reasons here. We're gonna make sure, let's say our line wasn't perfectly straight, we're gonna kinda eyeball it and make sure that we like it or you can take your tape measure and go, I got an inch and a half there. Boom, I got an inch and a half there. And the second reason is sometimes that, you know, our marks aren't perfect and we're gonna mark the bolt holes just either maybe closer together or too far away. So this way, with a little pressure, making sure it doesn't move, we got two perfect holes where we want them. We don't even have to play with another mark. So now we got two holes. We can take this kind of screw out. Now it's a nice tight fit, what you want. Uh, just kind of stop that water from leaking out. So take that out. We're gonna actually remove our tape now. Then what we're gonna do, Set that off to the side. I'm just going to take the plastic that pushed in off. You can either take a knife to it, a bigger drill bit works too. Just kind of clean up those holes so that water works. Water doesn't kind of leak through there. So now what we're going to do um, is we're going to take our bracket and we're going to Use the bracket as kind of a washer in a sense. That's why we're not putting flash washers on this side. So we're going to do that. Then we're going to take your rubber washer, put that on there. Then we're going to put, so the rubber washers like that. Slide it through. In this case, I'm going to have to kind of just screw them into place. Okay, so now we got those in there like that. Um, and now on the inside, same thing. We're gonna start with our rubber washer. Put that on. Next washer, put that on. Nice tight fitter on the screw, just what we want. Use the flat washer to push that in. Okay, take our cap nuts. Screw those on, get those started. Then we're gonna take the other side. Now just take your wrench and your screwdriver. And tighten them down. You don't have to go crazy here. Just make sure you got them nice and tight. Um, good compression on those rubber washers to stop them from leaking. Uh, but don't go crazy and try to break something. All right, there we go. We got our bracket on. Uh, let's test it out. Boom, beautiful. Just like what you want to see there. Um, comes in and off. That one works too. You know, we got air hose on. So now let's get the hole for our air hose 
on there. So what we're gonna do, since I, I think I wanna put it right on that flat part, um, you wanna keep it as high as possible. Um, so on a bigger box, I actually kind of snuck it up through here, punched through the back. Uh, so just kind of get it as high as possible. Put a piece of tape on there. Now make sure that you don't put, try to go up there so that your drill bit's on a, you know, angle and it's going to hit that lip. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my tape measure, I'm gonna take my marker. This is kind of arbitrary, but I'm going to come over, you know, it's kind of one inch, nice and clean. So one inch there, and then it's about three quarter from this lip to the top of that lip. So just kind of come down three eighths, center it nice on there, make it look nice. So that that marked, we're going to switch our drill to uh, the three eighths drill bit. And that's for this guy, um, cause this will sit right, uh, kind of in between the plastic and that inner diameter that we want is, uh, three A's. So let's punch that hole. Perfect. So we got that hole punched through. We're going to take tape off um, now since we got a nice hole there we're going to take our garment now this can be a little tricky to get started but you just kind of got to play around with it so what I like to do is shove it in there on an angle and then you just kind of have to compress that hole the inner hole and just work your way around um, it's going to be a tight fit, which is what we want, but it just means you have to put a little extra effort to get it in there for the first time. And just like that, it's in there. No, I didn't give you the best shot, but just kind of start on one side and just kind of keep pushing it in and working it way around. Um, you know, it's pretty easy you'll get it um, so next what we're gonna do is shove that hole see how good I mean that's a nice tight fit there um, no wire is gonna get out of there um, so I'm gonna pull that through and then I'm gonna put this on and I'm going to plug it in so in this case, um, I'm gonna give it a little extra hose because I want I want to make sure that I am not cutting it too short. If I want to trim it down in the future because it's just too long, I can do that. Um, so since I got plenty of hose out here, uh, plenty of hose out there, what you're gonna want is a scissors, a knife, um, and then so sort of like that. I'm just gonna cut it right there. Slip your weight on. Put your aerator back on. And there we go. You got a bubbler that will work great. Um, lid fits on perfect. Now, I didn't mention this right away, but uh, don't put your tube grommet through your lid you might think it's the best for water keeping the water in so it doesn't you know splash out or leak out uh but you don't want this attached you don't want this attached i mean imagine having you know your hose connected there and it's flopping around now you're gonna break your hose or just don't do that um just keep that off to onto the box keep all the holes just in one part not the other um so yeah uh, that finishes up the bait well. Um, like I said before, all the uh, parts of this will be linked in the description below. Uh, if you like this type of content or fishing content in general, 
like and subscribe to Norris Outdoors. Uh, we really appreciate it. And uh, stay tuned if you want to see how that conduit strap was uh, modified and see this actually being in use and uh, ran. So thanks for watching and have a good one. Okay guys, I'm going to show you guys how to modify um, that conduit strap to make it look, turn it from this to make it look like this so we can um, use more bubblers. Um, so first, you just want to hold it down. I'm doing it on a chopping block, you can do it on anything, just anything that you don't really mind, I guess, putting a dent in if it comes to that. Uh, but just hold it here and then you're going to just start hitting it right in the center there. Um, it is going to flare up on the sides there and just kind of try to keep it uh, in line here. So um, this side's a little higher right now. So I might, you know, hit more on that side, but just really try to keep it as even as possible. You know, that's starting to look pretty good um, on the sides there. So we're going to keep going a little bit more. Now we're going to work down these uh, flanges here. So we're actually going to put it right like that. And you're going to want to hit right on the corner here. Um, I know it's kind of counterintuitive. You might want to do this. Um, this works too. It's just a little harder, I guess. Then you can flip it over, flatten it out. You know, you can work this back. You can put it on the corner here. You know, somewhere you can get a good, really get that flattened out, you know. Now we're going to do the other side. This is pretty thin metal, so it's pretty easy to do. Um, just keep working it. You know, so sometimes you can get in there. Um, so I got a lot more work to do here. So if you keep working it like that, um, you can get it to look like that. Uh, obviously, I'm going to have to bend that out a little bit more. Um, so. so I got my bubbler here um, and a pair of pliers. Um, that helps too. So the bubbler is here so that when you kind of put it in there, you know, you can see if it, you're on the right track. Is it, are you getting it to fit? Um, and then here, you know, you can kind of use it to get in there and bend that back a little bit more. Try to straighten that out. Um, really works too. So kind of use anything at your disposal to really uh, get this into shape. Um, uh, I'm going to make it a little shallower. Two, so So after, oh boy, got a little, got to fix that down there. So 
All right, after a little playing around, it looks pretty good. Uh, I'm gonna keep messing with it, making it look a little bit better. Um, but you just kind of keep doing that until it fits on your uh, bubbler real nice. And it's nice and kind of straight and as flat as you can get it or you can want it. Um, but I'll keep playing around with this, make it a little bit nicer, but that's kind of the steps on how to do that. So that's how we turn that one um, that was meant for conduit into these that um, can hold your bubbler.